Hello everybody, welcome to the spooky month of October, and also welcome to Mouse Movie Show, a new episode. I'm your host, Ghoulie Gaba, and we're going to talk about some movies today. No news that came out in the past week kind of enticed me enough to have a full discussion like the Super Mario news did, but I, there are some big releases every single week in this month. So, lots of movies to talk about. I saw two. Uh, I watched one on HBO Max and one in theaters. I saw Venom... Let There Be Carnage in theaters. We're going to talk about that one first. And boy, oh boy, I can't believe I enjoyed this more than I expected to. It's definitely an improvement over the first movie, which I really don't like. And I still overall don't fully understand the fandom and the support behind these Venom movies. I think Venom as a character visually is very interesting and makes for a fun comic book antagonist for Spider-Man. And as a very poppy character visually on screen, Spider-Man... Um, I think I, I never really saw a direction where you make these Venom movies without Spider-Man, but they're doing that now. Uh, this one is directed by Andy Serkis. He's really known for doing a lot of motion capture for characters like Gollum and we more recently Caesar from the Planet of the Apes movies that came out, directed by Matthew Reeves. Um, but he does a really good job here, I think, more with having actors like Tom Hardy interact with the CGI characters like a Venom who is also voiced by Tom Hardy. And you could tell that Tom Hardy's having a good time. I just, I never fully grasped onto these movies. The stories don't connect to me the way that it does with a lot of other people. But I did have a good time with this. I think a lot of that is attributed to the fact that the movie is just over 90 minutes. And I think an hour and a half is a solid runtime for a movie. It did feel rushed here in, re in regards to how they told the story. Of weird flashback sequences where they use Woody Harrelson's voice in a younger person's body, and it, it, it that's the first thing you kind of notice, and it's very jarring. But then once you get to like the meat and bones of seeing Tom Hardy interact with this other character, this Venom, the whole thing that I think makes this movie a lot more fun than the first one is that they embrace and lean into the weird silliness of the idea of these this alien and this human being being like a a bitter married couple. They're always arguing about the most random things, about living in the apartment, about the alien wants to eat people, but Tom Hardy's character, Eddie Brock, is like, no, you can't eat everybody. Also, leave me alone. You're making a mess of the apartment. What are you doing? It's just the the chaotic mix of conversations that these characters have together makes for an enjoyable experience, especially if you're into what they're selling. If you didn't like the first movie, though, I don't think it's worth venturing into this one. I would just kind of just toss this to the side. I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but there is implications of where they're going with these movies and with the Venom character. And if you have any inclination of where I'm what I'm talking about without spoiling, you already know what I'm talking about uh, without even having seen the movie. But I'm interested in seeing how they approach that, if that's actually happening, or if that was just a, a fun tease that Sony was like, we have the opportunity to do this thing, so we might as well do this. Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy and also Carnage, Fun character. He has a lot of fun with the role. I did not care for Shriek, played by Naomi Harris, from more recent movies like the Bond movies and Moonlight. I love Naomi Harris as an actress. I did not care for her in this movie. I did not care for the character. I did not care for the arc they were trying to show with Cletus Cassidy's antagonistic character. So again, I think if you like the first Venom, it's worth trying to watch this movie, attempting to watch this movie. Maybe not in theaters, because theaters only right now, but it's an enjoyable movie. It's like a run-of-the-mill in regards to plot and character, but in regards to like trying to do something different, I think it does stand out from the crowd because of the performances from a Woody Harrelson and a Tom Hardy, and Tom Hardy doing the, the voice work of Venom, and Venom as a character is just so odd. And uh, it seems like he's like a gay icon now. If you've seen the trailer, he's at a rave at one point. There is a line that Venom says and utters at this rave that... Uh, more than implies and is super on the nose about where this character seems to stand sexually and is weird and out of nowhere but also kind of makes sense when you look back and step back and kind of look at the whole picture the last shot of the movie is just so random and i haven't stopped thinking about it because it reminded me of shawshank redemption and i don't mean that in a in a complimentary way <laughs> it was so it was so stupid. This whole movie is stupid. But if you enjoy stupid, the movie knows it's stupid. Is what makes it a little more tolerable. And I do think it's fun for what it is. 
So that's what I have to say about Venom, Let There Be Carnage, a line that is said in the movie. And every time Woody Harrelson said the word carnage, I cringed inside really hard. But it's fine. I get it. And then we have The Many Saints of Newark. It's a prequel for the Tony Soprano story, and it's an HBO show that was the zeitgeist of pop culture from the late 90s to like the mid-2000s, and it kind of had a big resurgence over the past decade. I recently watched it in full a couple years back, and I've seen it before, but I never really watched the entire show from beginning to end. I loved it. It's one of my favorite series of all time, and I was excited for this because David Chase, creator of the show, came back. Alan Taylor, who has directed Game of Thrones episodes for days and was a collaborator in the show Sopranos 2, came to direct this movie, and there's a lot of great talent in the cast. I, Michael Gandolfini, the son of James, rest in peace, came back to play his father's character in his teenage years. And just there's a lot going on there, potentially, for a really interesting mob flick that ties into the story of what we know from the show. And we didn't know how the tone was going to be, if it was going to be similar or not, how it was going to tie in. And just like they have Dickie Moltisanti, who is the father of one of the main characters of the show, and he's sort of a mentor figure to Tony Soprano in this movie. And just to get to my review, I said it on Twitter, and I'll say it again. Unfortunately, in my opinion, not only does Many Saints of Newark lack the GABA, but it also lacks the ghoul. Sounds better in a tweet. I think the biggest problem with me for this movie is that it feels like it's trying to go at the pace of the television medium where it, it just feels like a bunch of scenes strung together. There's no driving force for the movie. And I, I've said it to other people, but I don't mind when a movie is just vibes. I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, directed by Quentin Tarantino, is just vibes. But it's one of my favorite movies of recent memory because of the way that it flows. I kind of, The first time, I was just kind of absorbing into it, but I really, really liked it the first time. The second time I watched it, it clicked for me that I just enjoy spending time with these characters and just enjoy being in Hollywood in the late 60s with the music, with the story, and everything. And it is just vibes. This movie isn't exactly just vibes. There is a plot line with Leslie Odom Jr., who is kind of like a rival to Dickie Moltisanti, Alessandro Nivola's character. Um, and that doesn't really go anywhere, per se. There's tension there, but also it doesn't really... It fizzles out. Then you have Vera Farmiga playing Tony Soprano's mom. She does a really great job with her performance, mimicking and emulating the performance of the late actress who played her in the show. And doesn't really have much to do with an arc, though. There are, I just feel like the whole movie feels like a muddled string of scenes that don't really go anywhere. And I enjoyed watching this cast. This cast is so good. There's also an array of references to the show throughout the movie. I'm just making up random examples. Oop, here's a character as a baby. Oh no, he's crying because he doesn't like this other character. Oh boy, I wonder if they're going to have conflict in the show. Just like random things like that. And if, it doesn't focus on that. The references don't take away from the movie. But there's none of the, and nothing, this could not, for me, it's only a con because I didn't really see an identity for this movie. It didn't really form its own identity, but there's none of the fun or the pathos of the show in here. I didn't really care, even though I loved the performance from Alessandro Nivola, who I've seen in a few things. He's, I remember him from Jurassic Park 3, um, <laughs> mostly because that, that was part of my childhood, I guess. But I loved his acting in the movie. I just didn't care for the arc that they showcase for him in this movie because he, he's the main character in here, and he goes on a journey, and there are scenes that are engaging with his character, I just, but I didn't care overall for his journey from beginning to end, per se. It left no impact on me. I do think there will be an audience for this movie. I do think there are people who like this because there are scenes that you can attach yourself to and characters that you can attach yourself to like Dickie Moltisanti, or Tony as a kid, played by James Gandolfini's son, Michael. Uh, there are things to appreciate in this movie, too. I just don't think all the elements fit together to make an engaging narrative in this particular set. I I wish I liked this movie more. I wanted this to be one of my favorites of the year, to be honest. Um, and especially since David Chase came back. It's just, it's really sad. It makes me very sad. Uh, I will probably revisit at some point to see how I feel again um, before I do a rerun of the show at one point, at some point. But 
this movie just didn't do it for me. I'm not sure if it'll do it for other people. I'm sure it will. It just didn't connect with me almost at all. And I don't know if it's good. I'm struggling with the idea of if it's good because it's just not coherent enough for me to give it that kind of recommendation. But I still do recommend it if you're curious and if you're a fan of the show because you should at least form your own opinion on how you feel about this side of the story that David Chase is telling. But now I want to know from all you boys and girls, have you seen Venom? Two, have you seen Many Saints of Newark? Have you seen both? Have you seen either or? Have you gone to theaters to watch this? Was there a big audience for either of these movies? Did you have a good time or do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't already, you know what to do. Subscribe, ring the bell, comment down below. Let's have some fun talking about these movies. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week again for either a review of No Time to Die or something that crazy that happens during the news cycle of the week. I'll see you guys next time. Love y'all. Go watch a Halloween movie. It's October. Do it. Do it. Do it. Bye-bye.